Hey there folks, so I wanted to talk about how I do my false bottoms. I like to use the egg crate method because with the egg crate method you have free flowing drainage, you don't have anything obstructing your water table, your evaporation or anything like that. It's really really light versus um, the Hydro Balls or Lika, which stands for lightly expanded clay aggregate. People use Matala. I find that Matala is too short. They say to go for a two inch drainage layer. This isn't exactly two inches. With Lika, you definitely want to put two inches because with Lika, you have all those clay balls taking up a lot of space. But with this method, you don't have clay taking up space. I'll show you a little bit of the details later. So you're gonna need a sheet of egg crate. You can find it at Lowe's or Home Depot in the, in the lighting section. Ask them for ceiling light panels and they'll take you to this section where this is. It's called wet white egg crate louver. The reason why I have different cutters here is I like to use electrical flush cutters. You can use wire cutters, but they have a curvature. So I suggest having a pair of cuticle cutters and the cuticle cutters you, I got these at Dollar Tree. So when you start off with your piece, you want to locate this very thin edge that doesn't have a piece going all the way across. So you locate that thin edge and you go through. We're gonna start off by taking out strips for legs. All right, so then there's one square and two squares. You wanna come up here and go ahead and start cutting this flush. So you go all the way across and then you're going to be left with some two square wide legs. This one got broken off. There's that little nib there. That's where electrical flush cutters come into play where you can cuz like with this kind of this kind of um false bottom or this size, it just so happens that this five gallon is exactly 24 by 12 squares. So after you cut through the sheet and have all your legs, you want to worry about sizing up your egg crate bottom. A great way to do it is to lay your aquarium on its side. Then you can Put the egg crate up against the tape and see how long you need it to be. Always cut it a little bit long. So I've done that with both sides and like I said with this five gallon it just happens to be 12 by 24 squares. Also while you're making it you'll have small pieces like such as this that just happens to be extra so I have a bag full of little pieces that have different sized legs and everything like that. The main reason why you want to go ahead and get rid of this little part is because it doesn't sit well at all. So just go ahead and get rid of that and snip that little sliver off. With this five gallon, I only needed to put three supports. It's not going to have a bunch of weight on it and everything like that. Also, you can see that I put the supports away from the edge. That's so you can get the false bottom in and out of the tank. It'll be a lot easier once you cut off these um, ends, but since I'm not going to be using this, I'm going to take the zip ties off and save them for another project. With something like a 20 long, you're going to want something to cover the distance of the, of the bottom more. With a 40 gallon breeder, you would probably want to have like two like this but you definitely want to have that good strong center support whenever you put your zip ties on it it's a good good practice to zip tie to corners to the where the um, squares meet down here I put a zip tie on a flat part and you can see it's just really really wobbly moves around but here on these corners it's not tight yet here on these corners, it's a lot more stout. With this one, it just so happens to be 12 by 24 squares, 
but don't be you don't have to make it completely flat across you can make it to where the ends are sticking out like that and just keep trimming because you don't want to have a large gap as you can see with this false bottom here there isn't a large gap anywhere around the tank as you can see it butts up against the glass really well don't be afraid to leave your pieces long to butt up against the glass be patient keep snipping it down until it fits inside some people like to use window screen I don't like to use window screen because of the large holes as you can see the holes are so large you can pretty much I didn't even put pressure I just twisted it but you can stick a toothpick through it I like to use air conditioner filtering filter foam and with this it has it's very porous but it has so many layers of cells that your microfauna doesn't fall through it you only see the end of the toothpick whenever I put pressure but otherwise you're not seeing seeing the end of the toothpick that'll keep your your microfauna from falling through and also it'll keep your substrate from falling through whenever you put the window screen on there and there's a gap all that sediment falls down into the cracks and it builds up and builds up I'll show you an example in a moment I have seen examples of people wrapping their false bottom with with um, with their substrate barrier you don't want to do that you want to actually lay your substrate barrier in the bottom create an overlap in the corner and then put your substrate in that way it goes up against the side of the window screen and it pins it pins the screen in air conditioning filter foam is a lot better you put the foam in the corner fold let it fold over a little bit then put your substrate in all right here you can see the drainage layer from the side as you can see it's not quite two inches like I said with Lika that is whenever it really matters with Matala Matala is even thinner I have my concerns about it but if you keep your eye on it and drain it more often I think it might be fine sheet of Matala to fit in here is going to be a, as big as it's going to cost as much as a huge sheet that you can do many tanks with this is a rather cost-effective way once you um, have your egg crate set up you can cover it up with contact paper I like to use contact paper with a three foot high tank that I did I masked off certain areas and I just sprayed it with spray paint like several several coats of spray paint to make it really thick but even still it wound up um, scratching and stuff that's how I do the false bottom I'm going to go show you some setups and how there is a water table and everything like that there is a tank that I have used just to grow out some plants in and here you can see the egg crate I don't let my water table get above one square so you have this water table in the bottom which great which is great for evaporation for drainage in this tank and I like to do this with log tanks I use a tube a tube can be easily hidden behind stuff some people like to use these massive PVC caps and drainage and stuff like that that's not necessary unless you have a pretty huge tank they like to use that method and use shop backs but you don't want to suck all the water out of the bottom of your tanks you want to have a water table you want to create that evaporative effect like that like there is in the wild this is actually Miss King tubing and what I did was is I cut it at an angle and then I cut the tip off but before you cut the tip off go ahead and stick it through your screen or whatever and make a hole with the filter foam that I showed you sometimes you might have to take a pair of scissors and cut a small slit into it instead of trying to force a hole through it whenever the tube goes onto the down to the bottom of the glass it gives it a gap to suck up water if it's completely flush it won't suck up water good there's the tube and you can see the cut in the tube that allows it to drain well here is some ex or not exoterras these are zoo meds so with zoo med and exoterra you can drill the front and put a drainage port on them so what you do is you open up the lid you find the hinge pin the hinge pin is over here 
you come over in between the glass and the hinge pin and drill you a hole and then you fish a tube down in there I have this huge syringe 100 milliliter syringe it's a lure lock syringe which fits on the edge of the tube very nicely and I suck out excess moisture this 10 gallon here I put an aquarium tube down the back and then I sprayed my foam so I have a drain a drainage tube that's going all the way down the in the behind the background into the bottom here is what I was talking about if you don't put it up against the edge enough you will have substrate coming down into the bottom the substrate has fallen through and it's falling to an extent that it's it now has a bridge from the bottom to the top here is a 20 long I drilled the side of the tank and put a tube through there for drainage all right so that's how I make my false bottoms and it doesn't cost a lot of money if you want to use wire cutters you can cuticle trimmers dollar tree for a dollar these um, zip ties I think are like three bucks you don't want to use giant um, zip ties these um, electrical trimmers are like four or five dollars on Amazon this is 99 cents you can find it in the um, air conditioning section of Walmart a sheet of egg crate it's about $17 but you can do a few tanks hydro balls it's going to be more expensive it's going to be heavier but still I would use this kind of material for your drainage layer so your isopods and springtails and everything like that aren't going into the water and drowning and coming in and out of the water well hopefully you guys found this helpful later folks